G'day guys. Well, this channel isn't really about um, doing a lot of product uh, reviews. However, every now and then uh, I get someone that reaches out to me and asks me to have a look at one of their uh, their products or their um, items that they've uh, thought of, designed and produced. And in this situation here, I was contacted by a fella name of Gabor in, uh, from Hungary. And he reached out to me and said, hey Steve, um, I love your videos, <laughs> but I've got a product here that you uh, you may really enjoy using. And um, if you don't mind, check it out and let me know what you think. Well, it's the Focus on Stars filter. And what this Focus on Stars filter uh, does is it helps you create um, a perfect focus for your nightscape astrophotography. Now, when it comes to um, telescopes uh, for focus these days, a lot of it's driven by um, an automated focusing system, which is uh, you know fairly um, uh, fairly easy to set up, and it's it's majority of people I'd say have got um, an electronic focus motor on their telescopes, especially uh, if they're running like an ASIS system with ZWO uh, focus motors. They're fairly affordable. Um, before that. Uh, or some of them may uh, use focusing masks on the front of their, uh, their telescopes to help achieve that critical focus. And the reason we want critical focus is that we tend to lose a lot of details in our astro images when our focus is only a millimeter or two out. Well, when it comes to wide field nightscape photography, um, looking back on a tiny little screen uh, in your um, live view mode, trying to zoom in, uh, as much as you can on those stars and turn your focus um, wheel on your uh, lens to try and achieve that, that perfect focus, that star as small as possible. Well, we all sometimes get it wrong. And going back a little while ago, I shot a nightscape uh, with a video and it turned out that that uh, focus in that image was, it was out of focus. I thought it was in focus, it was out of focus. Um, so yeah, going back to it, the, uh, the focus on stars filter is a filter that sits uh, in front of your lens and it cre creates a diffraction um, pattern on your, on your stars with your wide angle lenses. And by adjusting this diffraction spike, um, you can get yourself absolutely spot on focus. Now, considering that Gabor has actually, he actually makes these filters. Um, I'm pretty damn impressed in that aspect. I mean, myself, I like to uh, create and, and make my own, um, you know, products and stuff like that from my own RASA telescopes and, and so on. Um, well, to make this piece of glass here with a, uh, a diffraction pattern um, inbuilt into it, so I'm assuming it's a, a couple of um, pieces of glass and sandwiched between them is this um, diffraction spike sort of uh, uh, pattern here. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to to try it out, use it, and give you my thoughts. But we can't exactly try it out here. So let's go searching for some uh, clear skies and see what we can uh, come up with. So fast forward an hour and a half and here we are out on location for tonight's imaging uh, shoot of the Milky Way um, with our uh, focus on stars filter. See just how well that works. I'm pretty sure it's going to be damn good. Anyway, before we get into the, uh, the action of photographing the stars, uh, it's still a little bit light at the moment. So I thought I'd talk about the location and where I am and uh, throw in some possible true facts. I'll let you guys decide uh, that for yourself. Well, here we are. Uh, if you haven't already realized, I'm, I live in here in uh, South Australia and we have all kinds of uh, animals here, um, deadly and cuddly. I mean, we got koalas, we got kangaroos, we got emus, we have uh, platypus, we have echidnas. I guess you guys uh, get the drift and on the other hand, We've got the ones that you guys are kind of familiar uh, about yourself um, on the other side of the world, and that is the deadly ones. We've got a lot of snakes, um, quite deadly snakes. 
we have your spiders, your red backs, your wolf spiders, your trapdoor um, bundle web based spiders. Uh, and then we've got, you know, goannas, and, and the list sort of goes on. Well, there's one thing that we actually have here. And these guys may be arguing with me, but let me just take you back a little bit further. I've been to Scotland. I've been to Inverness. And I've been to the locks. And there's one thing you guys up here in, uh, in Scotland would know about, and that is the Loch Ness Monster. Well, I did not see the Loch Ness Monster. And that's because for all this time, us Australians have been tricking these guys up there in Scotland. We've been manipulating these Loch Ness uh, monsters in the Lake of Loch Ness and uh, making it deliberately blurry bringing on that tradition and that uh, mythology of the uh, the Loch Ness well guess what it's actually here in South Australia and we're going to be photo photographing it tonight with the Milky Way hopefully rising up um, behind it now if you're still with me good because this Loch Ness monster actually started off as a bunch of tires um, here at uh, Loch Eel, um Lake Bum, bum, bagana, I think. I probably definitely got that wrong. <clears throat> anyway, um, it started off with some tyres uh, in the lake here with a metal pole as its head. And after a while, the metal pole got stolen, so we no longer had a little Loch Ness in Loch Eel, the, uh, the beautiful uh, pink salt lake. So, not too long ago, they made a big Loch Ness. And it's turned out to be a pretty cool uh, star attraction here at, uh, at Lock Hill. Um, they've created all these uh, nice little viewing platforms, boardwalks and, and stuff like that to see it. So uh, yeah, when it gets a little bit darker, we're going to head down there. We're going to try out, I figured it'd be a fun um, location to try out the uh, Focus on Stars um, filter. And, uh, and have a bit of fun shooting Loch Ness under the Milky Way. Insert random clip right here. <laughs> While we'll wait for it just to get a little bit darker, it's getting pretty close, the stars are starting to come out. I just wanted to show you the scale on how big Loch Ness is here. Hopefully you can see me uh, fairly well here, but anyway, here it is. Loch Ness, <laughs> right above me, I'm about 5 foot 8, so this thing here is about 10 foot tall. And yeah, <laughs> I cannot wait. I know it's a bit random. Um, but uh, yeah, I need to do something to kill the time. So uh, yeah, hopefully the next time you guys see me, it'll be dark enough and we'll be imaging. Okay, so it's just getting dark now and I want to show you how the focus on star filter works. Um, right now we're going to pick a nice bright star in the sky and we're going to place this on the front of our uh, camera lens. However, I don't have the uh, a filter holder for the front of this uh, camera lens. This is my 50 millimeter f1.2 um, so i'm just going to hold it up to it and i'm also going to show you that if you don't have a filter holder then you don't need to go out and buy one to use uh, this mask to get your perfect focus all right so what do we want to do is uh, have our lens in manual mode we want to pick a bright star um, preferably the brightest the better and we're just going to uh, center that star in the middle of our screen all right we don't want to be um uh, trying to focus on a star that's in the corners of our screen because it's not going to get us the best focus. Okay, so I hope you can see the back of the screen here. And what I want to do is uh, just zoom in. So I'm in video mode on the Nikon. Nikon's going to give you the uh, the best clarity um, for doing this with the uh, focus on star filter. You can try it in just um, photographic mode. Uh, however, I do find that in video mode um, it does work better. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to place our filter on the front of our camera and we're going to zoom in on the star and hopefully you can see this on the back of my camera where we've got three um, prongs or a bit of a diffraction spike and as I run my um, focuser in and out we can see that those, uh, those three spikes start to come up into a nice point and I don't know, I don't think you can quite see this, but when you're just out of focus, there's uh, 369, um, 18 little spikes. 
And what they're going to do is all uh, combine it into just three. So just by changing the filter and just turning it slightly, we can see I have now got six um, diffraction spikes. And that there is going to give me absolute pinpoint focus throughout my image. So as you can see, um, using the focus on star filter is super easy. And if you're wanting to get that absolute critical focus, and the reason I say critical focus, is because if your focus is absolutely spot on, you can also focus out things like chromatic aberration as well. Um, so this, this, this little filter here is uh, definitely in my bags whenever I go uh, nightscape uh, photographing from now on, believe you me, absolutely love it. Right, I think it's time to uh, find some compositions of Loch Ness under the stars and see what we come up with. So the first image we're going to shoot is Loch Ness eating Orion. That's right, Orion is dipping quite low on the horizon here. So we're going to fire off a, uh, a few images. I'm going to stack them um, just, to, uh, just to get a little bit more detail in this night sky, as well as I'm going to have to uh, refocus on uh, Nessie uh, because I'm so close to it. I'm using my 50mm f1.2. I haven't touched my focus since I've used my uh, focus on star mask. So I know my focus is dead on perfect. There, uh, we're going to shoot about a four second exposure at f1.2 and I'm going to be around about an ISO of 800. Now I do need to turn this uh, light off to, uh, to shoot my image but I'm going to shoot I think roughly around about nine images I think um, is a nice little quick stack uh, to try and get a, a really nice clean um, night sky Orion and then we'll go back onto uh, Nessie and uh, just blend those two images uh, together in Photoshop and we should have a pretty cool looking Nessie eating Orion shot, fingers crossed. All right, so we've just finished taking 18 photographs. Uh, I refocused for Nessie um, in the last nine and I shot another nine images uh, before that um, of uh, Orion. And I tell you what, it looks, it looks really cool. Um, I really actually like the out of focus uh, image there really accentuates Orion um, and I used a bit of side lighting on Nessie uh, just to create a little bit more of a, uh, a feel so after doing this I don't think I really need to worry about stacking um, I've, this is a really cool image yes it's out of focus so it kind of um, the stars are out of focus so it kind of defeats the purpose of the uh, focus on stars um, mask in this shot but uh, the shot I'll show you afterwards um, with the, the stars all in uh, perfect focus with uh, an in-focus Nessie with the 50mm f1.2 Nikon lens and my Z Astro Mod Z7. So uh, yeah, first image down and I'm pretty damn excited. So let's see what else we've, uh, we can come up with. the last shot of the night. Fingers crossed that pano worked out. The Milky Way is now risen high enough so it's right behind old Loch Ness here and uh, this is the shot that I actually came down here to try and get. Um, the others were uh, while I was here let's play around and I haven't shot a pano in quite some time. But here we go the uh, 14 to 24 is still on. Um, I'm shooting about 14 mil I'm going to be uh, shooting at ISO 3200, about 20 seconds uh, of exposure, a stack of nine, um, f2.8, and uh, here we go.
Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I certainly love the uh, the Focus on Stars filter and I'm gonna be using it and uh, carrying it in my bag on every trip I do for my nightscape photography. It just absolutely helps me out in maintaining or getting that critical focus when it comes to uh, the stars because we all know critical focus is everything when it comes to astrophotography. A little bit out and you lose a lot of detail in your images. A uh, big thank you to uh, Gabor for sending this out to me. I really apologize if I uh, haven't got your name right. Um, I just love the innovation um, when it comes to astrophotography and people developing uh, their own products to make their life easier. So if you want to, uh, or you want to read up a little bit more about um, the Focus on Stars filter and you haven't seen it before, please check out his website. I'll leave a link in the description below. If this is the first channel, uh, first video um, you've seen of mine, please check out some of my other uh, images. And if you like them, hit subscribe. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, if you've got any, any questions, just leave them in the comments below. All right, guys, so that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed these uh, images of mine. So until next time, take it easy. See you.